I'm still here, but meteorologist Josh Johns here. I am in Colleen right now, Central Texas College, where they're setting up for the Eclipse Over Central Texas event that's happening later on today. We've been here since Good Morning Texas. We're going to be with you through the Eclipse, and then we'll be tracking severe storms. More on that in a little while, but I want to show you what's already happening here. You see they got the stage set up, a bunch of stuff that's going to be happening. Starts at 8, runs till 5.30. Vendors, food vendors, back on the other side of this building, they got more vendors. There is a lot of folks that are going to be out here for this, and it's going to be a really cool event. You can get more information on it on CTC's website, which is ctcd.edu. Check it out. They have a timer showing you exactly until when the event is happening. We'll get that wireless network out of the way. And a bunch of shows happening at the planetarium. So a bunch of cool stuff going on. And, of course, we've been tracking it all morning long in your neighborhood. We've got all our reporters stationed in your neighborhood in Central Texas ready to track this eclipse as it happens. But this is where I will be later on today and where we've already been this morning. It's a party here. We already got the music. We got the storm wrangler. We got the live truck. We got Doug driving the live truck, running the video. I've got Grant behind me running it here. We're going to have reporters all over Central Texas today to cover this. Let me show you what's happening with the weather so far, though. Look at this. This is probably the coolest thing I've seen all day because when we woke up, we got down here, there was a bunch of cloud cover. That's not good for the eclipse. But you can see some breaks already happening right here in Colleen. That's good. We want that to start happening early because that could mean that it happens later on as we get into the middle of the day, closer to that eclipse. And through the breaks, I'm seeing blue skies. We have high clouds here trying to come in too. Let's walk over to the live truck and I'll be able to show you some of the weather stuff that's going on here as we are going through the day today. So here's future track and I'll hold it out here. Hopefully you can see it. I paused it at 1.30, but let's go back to where we are right now. Again, it shows that thick deck of clouds that's out there. But we'll continue through the day. Notice how we see clearing trying to happen south of Waco Temple Colleen, and that's trying to work up. It is very possible we get real lucky here. 1.30, that's pretty close to the time of the eclipse. You go online to our website. We've got your list of totality times there. But that's when it happens in Waco Temple Colleen is between that 1.30, 1.40 time frame, or between 1.30 and 1.50. And you can see right there, we may see some breaks in the cloud cover. That is good news. If we can manage to pull that off, we will be in one of the best spots in the country to see this eclipse. Of course, it all depends if we get the clouds out of here, and hopefully we do. But here's what I want you to be careful of. If you happen to be here from out of town, or even if you're here in Central Texas, or you live here in Central Texas, you know that in the springtime, we can get thunderstorms. That's likely going to be the case this afternoon as a warm front lifts northward. I think we'll see them pop up in the Brazos Valley and then work from south to north across the area. These will carry the threat of strong to severe storms, including the potential for hail, wind, and tornadoes. So I know you're going to be excited about seeing the eclipse. You're just going to be excited. There's going to be a lot of folks on the road trying to get where they're going after the eclipse. We don't want you getting caught off guard. So know that in the afternoon, we could be seeing some strong to severe thunderstorms continuing into the evening. We may even have more coming up tomorrow, but let's talk about the threat for today. Again, severe storm potential in place across all of Central Texas, but I do think the biggest activity will occur east of I-35. That's where we have you in that scattered risk. Potentials there for up to hen egg size hail, winds to 65, and even a few tornadoes. So it's going to be a very busy day, not only with the eclipse that's happening here and all the events happening here in Colleen, but also with the potential for severe weather. That's why we got the storm wrangler, because once we're done here, we may have to go right out there and get into the storm because they're going to be forming in the afternoon. So, of course, you can count on us. We're going to keep you advised, and we're going to be covering this in your neighborhood, going into your neighborhood, looking for that severe weather potential. Hopefully, not only we see breaks in the sunshine, but hopefully we also see the severe weather threat kind of minimized, but it is something we're going to have to watch very closely here as we go through the day. Matt Hines is in Woodway. We're going to have Caleb at the studio. We're covering this on all fronts, weather-wise and reporter-wise, with folks in Lake Waco, Hillsboro, uh, Waco itself, Colleen. Also, we have folks in, uh, what is it? Lampasas, right? Yeah. Lampasas as well. So we've got you stationed all over Central Texas to witness this once in a lifetime event that is going to be awesome even if we do have the clouds you're going to notice this as it comes over we'll get plunged into darkness for four minutes in spots and even over four minutes in spots right here alone 
we're looking at four minutes and close to 20 seconds of totality. That is a once in a lifetime event that you won't forget. So be sure to get outside, see this and watch our coverage on air and online. The online coverage starts at 12, goes till two on air, one to two. And we'll have you covered with all facets of how to stay safe during the eclipse, the potential for severe weather afterwards as well. And just the cool things happening in Central Texas as we celebrate this once in a lifetime event. Do we have any questions, Grant? Um, it says, I watched some live videos of the eclipse. Is any part of the U.S. currently under the eclipse? No, that's not going to start. We'll start to see partiality. That's when the first contact is between the moon and the sun there, or the moon's shadow. I think kind of the question he's asking, when will the eclipse start for the, the North America continent? For North and America it continent. It crosses the Rio Grande. The totality part crosses the Rio Grande around 1.30 and then it moves across into here. It'll get out of Maine closer to three o'clock. So it's gonna be a two hour event about, I believe, over the entire country. Partiality will start as early as lunchtime. That's why we start our coverage at 12. And that's when we'll first start to see the sun go from the sun to the crescent and then eventually completely covered by the moon shadow or by the earth shadow rather. It is gonna be crazy says what direction should we be looking I'm assuming south so really and truly because it's noon you'll be looking straight up for the most part but it's going to come across here from the southwest to the northeast okay. much like the direction our storms go um, says when is the bad weather supposed to start after the eclipse that's the best way to put it but I do think the biggest time frame for that will be after four o'clock and into that nine o'clock time frame tonight that we'll have to watch the closest for those strong to severe storms. Okay, will it clear up for San Saba? Will it clear up for San Saba? Really and truly, everything's a roll of the dice because of this deck of low clouds and because of the high clouds. Even if we clear out the low clouds, it's possible you have more high clouds in San Saba. Okay, I, and we have one asking, where are you at? I'm at Central Texas College in Colleen. And we are real close to the center line of the eclipse. It's probably 10, 15 miles that way, so coming over Lamp County. If you're in Fort Hood, if you're in Colleen, if you're even in Temple Ooh. or Belt, come on in. Come oh, let me in, show you the eclipse in. map, too. We'll show you the eclipse map, too. I got to pull this over to look at, but we are getting enough questions about the totality and the timing and stuff like that. I want to just give you a rundown of what's going on here. So bear with me. Did I go through a lot? It says, what time is the eclipse starting in Waco? So here's the path. Remember, around 1.30, we get totality starting to cross the Rio Grande. Watch how it comes through. The big time frame is going to be after 1.30, likely between 1.30 and that 1.45 time frame. Here is 1.36. You're already in totality in San Saba, Salado, Colleen, parts of Temple. And then in Waco, you're already in totality close to 138. So after 130 is really when this is going to happen. And then eventually after around 142 is when things start to move off into East Texas. And they'll have a better chance of viewing the eclipse in East Texas because they aren't having to fight this deck of low clouds that's out there now. But see how it traverses all the way across the country? We're talking about covering over Missouri, Illinois, parts of Kentucky, Indiana, also into Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, all the way up across our country, into Maine and eventually into Canada. So this is a big deal that is happening today. And hopefully, like I said, we get lucky enough that we can see some breaks in these clouds and get to experience this once in a lifetime event. Uh, so they're still kind of asking, will it clear, I guess? Really and truly? Explain the low clouds a little more. Here's the problem. Low cloud cover came in. We already have high clouds. So not only are we just battling low clouds, it'd be one thing if we were just battling low clouds, but we're also having high clouds come in because we're stuck on the back end of a trough. So that's swinging all this moisture in from the Pacific. That's why we have the high cloud cover. The low clouds, that's Gulf moisture that came in overnight. That low cloud cover, if we see it break up a good bit by lunch, then we'll likely have an okay view. We just may have to fight the high clouds still. Models really struggle with the low cloud cover. We are seeing some signs all clear. And when I'm seeing more of these breaks than what's expected, that kind of tells me, hey, maybe the model is a little bit wrong. And we see more breaks than expected, and we have a better shot at seeing it. There are a lot of factors that come into play, including the terrain in Central Texas. We had some fog this morning in Temple. That fog wasn't in Killeen. That tells you that there's a difference 
based on the terrain where you are. Models struggle to handle that. They struggle to handle a lot of things. They're going to struggle to handle the fact that we'll cool 5 to 10 degrees as the eclipse comes over us because it gets dark. So there are a lot of things that are at play here, which is why we can't tell you exactly where those breaks in the clouds will be. But you still need to go outside, feel the eclipse. Remember, wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Don't look directly at the sun until we reach totality. That's when you won't see any light around the sun. You don't want a ring. You don't want little fiery things on the edge. You'll be able to tell when it's totality. That's when you can take it off. So it starts, the, the eclipse pre the totality starts at 1220. The partiality starts partiality. at 1220. That's when you need your glasses. That's when you need your glasses, all the way till totality. And totality will only be up to four minutes of spot. Some areas may even see only a minute. If you're on the very edge of the path, say out towards Robertson and Falls County, you may only see a minute of totality, if not less. So best thing to do, I tell you what, I plug our website, but also go to timeanddate.com and you, they'll have a little eclipse page. You can type that in there and you'll be able to type in your location. You'll get the exact breakdown of where that is for your specific location. So after totality, you need the glasses again. Right? Yes, you're gonna need the glasses again after totality. So only during the totality can you take the glasses Only off. during totality. Um, and don't look directly at the sun, even with your, well, don't look directly at the sun with your glasses off. During in totality, you can, but if you start feeling any sort of weirdness, just put the glasses back on. It'll still be cool to see. So they're asking about your super cool shirt. It's kind of Ain't like that cool? the clouds. Um, it's not readily available, but if you like the styling, we can, you can possibly find it at a Walmart. I will tell you that much. There you go. But we have altered it for us because we love the design so much and we figured, you know, what the heck. There you go. Let's give them a little credit. Heck yeah. So, all right, well that's it. And let's make sure you come back at 12 and join us so you can see all the fun we're having. We're excited.